Welcome back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Mr. Babel, and this is more Shadows Over Loathing. Okay, there's only just a couple of quests I have not done, and I'm just not up to this one right now. Not because it's hard, but because it is literally all blocks of text. Uh, one of those puzzles where, you, where you, know, you, know the, you know the type, where it's like, there, there's a tenant house full of people and he goes well i don't remember where this guy's uh, room is but i know it's not above the room of the guy that sells clocks oh no uh he's not on the same floor as the guy who sells shirts you know that kind of thing well there's no shirts in kol uh well there are but you gotta have it not in this game anyway long story uh wearing a shirt is an unlockable ability in kingdom of loathing all right uh so anyway I have decided to travel to the new area. The lighthouse keeper. Talk to him. Excuse me, you the lighthouse keeper. Sorry to bother you. Uh, my name's Humboldt Goofenschmerz. Uh, I, uh, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Are you okay? I, uh, I just ain't talked out loud in a while. I get rusty. I see. Lighthouse keeping's a lonely job, huh? Well, it's solitary, that's for sure. I ain't mind it, though. I ain't exactly a people person. What can I do for you? What does a lighthouse keeper actually do? Well, used to be I had to light the lamp every sundown, then douse it at sunrise to save on fuel. Used to be? Well, when it was an oil lamp, we got a hook up to the electrical grid a couple of years ago, though, so I just leave it on all the time. About all I have to do now is change the bulb once in a while. Sounds very peaceful. Yeah, that it is. Uh, nice and quiet, plenty of time on my hands. You must have a bunch of hobbies. Yep, got a book and a whittling knife and plenty of middle distance to stare into. How do you get into this line of work? Oh, my family's always been lighthouse keepers. On both sides, Ma and Pa kept lighthouses on each side of each other. Used to wink the lights back and forth once in a while. Oh, that's kind of romantic. You know, I never did find out how I was actually born. What? Anyway, was there something you needed? You seen an old compass around? Directions kind or circles kind? Directions. Yup. Got an old one I picked up at an estate sale, oh, twenty-odd years ago, I reckon. I'd show it to you, but it's upstairs, and the lighthouse is flooded. Flooded? Uh, yep. Filled right up to the top. Have a look by the window there, and you might see a fish pass by. How'd that even happen? Pump broke. No, I mean, how does a lighthouse fill up with water? We aren't even below sea level here. Eh, hey, something to do with the tides, I reckon. Th this is a lake? Anyway, I need a Glaxton valve to fix the pump. There's a hardware store down the road a piece, if you have a mind to help out. All right. Dusty chest set. Nice chest set. Did you build the pieces yourself? Uh, yep. Took me 16 years. Took you six months to carve each piece? Pawns went quicker than the tall ones, but more or less, uh, yep. The horses were particularly tricky. No sense rushing it. I guess not. Want to play a game? Can't. Already got a game in progress. Only one piece that's been moved is a single white pawn. Yup. Uh, yup. I went first. That was about two years ago. Who are you playing with? Nobody. Well, here. I'll play you. Move one of the black, pawn, black pawns forward. Interesting. It's your turn. Don't rush me. I want to consider all the possibilities. Come back in three or four months. I don't want to cook nothing. I want to look in the mirror and get free XP. Alright. <coughs> single book. War and Peace? That's a hefty one. Mind the bookmark now. Well, of course. Looks like you just started. Been reading about five and a half years. Your bookmark is still in Chapter 1. Just got up to the last sentence of it. I've been reading one word a day. Yeah, but it's almost 600,000 words long. Well, yep. Don't tell me how it ends. I won't. The Lighthouse Keeper's bed is simple, but very tidy. The, through the window, you see the lighthouse is entirely filled with water. The lighthouse keeper has put a little cork in the keyhole. Hmm. What kind of valve did you need again? Glaxton. Okay. Will any other kind work? Nope. It's a Glaxton pump. Needs a Glaxton valve. Wait, is that a style of valve or a brand name? Both. Ugh. Proprietary, proprietary hardware is the worst. Uh, yep. It sounds like I'm saying yup, but I'm not putting a P on the end. He's saying uh yup. Uh yup, uh yup, uh yup. Alright. I'm going to the, 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 going to the hardware store. Okay. 
Sandwich Historical Village. Ooh, witches. Let's check it out. Wait, why did I give her an Australian? Get them bones out. We're going to check it out. Anyway, you like that kind of spooky stuff? It's the berries. It gets the blood pumping, you know? Well, if they have a haunted house, you got to promise not to shoot the actors. No promises. I'll check it out later. I'm headed to the store. After a short hike, you find a small hardware store nestled in the sparse woods surrounding the lake. It's the very model of a down-home country hardware store, except it doesn't have any old-timers sitting out front chewing the fat. Maybe it's their day off, or they ran out of fat. Translate. Nice man. Ask him for candy. Neat. Never understand the purpose of any of these tools. Ineffective pesticides. Paints in all the season's trendiest patented colors, such as blackberry magenta, ultra lilac, and cherry olive. Those all sound awful. You're the proprietor, I assume. Uh, yeah. Well, welcome to Valley Hardware. Best hardware store in Crystal Dream Valley. Why is that? It's the only hardware store in Crystal, Re in Crystal Dream Valley. Ha <laughs> ha. Been a long time since I got to use that joke. Don't give me new customers or new jokes. What can I do for you? Candy. Hard candy. Up your armor. What can I do for you? Ask about a valve. Sure, what kind you need? Glaxton. Glaxton valve? <laughs> well, shucks, they stopped making those things nearly a decade ago. I guess there's a slight chance they're still in the back room. Ain't been in the back room since termites got at the inventory. Well, maybe since it got flooded. Anyway, it's a real biblical style of disaster back there. Here, I'll unlock the door for you so you can take a look around. If you find a Glaxton valve in that mess, you're welcome to it. Thanks. Mind your step in there. What do you have for sale? Cooking with power tools. Oh, heck yeah. This spell is my bay. Yes, I know I used that wrong. One of the only benefits of getting old is... Uh misusing slang just to watch younger people flinch. Alright. Plunger. It's a weapon. Meh. Okay. How much XP do I have? 133. That means I can probably learn a new skill. And get it right. Cooking with power tools. The book's thesis is that there isn't really much of a difference between a kitchen mixer and an electric drill. Ooh, five damage per hit. There we go. All righty. I need to read what I did with the book, but I accidentally clicked through. All right. We need to unlock more places, too. An oddly rectangular brown rock catches your attention. On a closer inspection, it's a totally ruined, rusted, and partially stunk, sunk in the ground pre-war soda cooler. Although someone fitted a meat-operated lock on the door at some point. Due to the rust, you can't tell brand what brand it was or if there's sodas in it. Buy a soda. Rusty cola can. A very nice little uh, combat uh, combat item. Does damage. A ray of sunshine peeks through the clouds, and a light breeze rustles through the trees, making your hike through the woods much more pleasant, at least for the moment. You even catch sight of a group of large, gaily colored butterflies. You move toward them slowly so as not to startle them, and you get closer. They realize instead of having regular insect bodies, they're little fair. They're little people, fairies. Wow. Hello there. Hello. Gosh, you're really beautiful. You're beautiful. Hey, that sounded like my voice. Oh, okay. Uh, are you guys... Uh, that's not like my voice. Are you guys mimics? That's real cute. Ah, it's on my face. No, not my eyes. This is actually kind of a creepy thing. Uh, oh, what the hell? You swat away the fairy that floated up next to you and attempted to stab you in the neck with a rusty needle. Hell! I'll just be on my way then. Look out, Jim. That one's got a gun. Indeed, another fairy's approaching, lugging a full-size snub-nosed revolver. You're getting sleepy. Sleepy. When I snap a piece, you'll fall to sleep. You'll fall. Sleep. You don't actually understand human speech, I'm guessing. As if to confirm, the little creature makes the sound of a rabbit being strangled to death. That's horrible. Suck down bullets, you little jerks. Suck down sleaze damage. <laughs> don't even need to bother casting again. Slice. Fairy knife. Um... Phew. You survey the brightly colored fairy tale carnage and pick up some useful looking bits. Then you notice a faint shimmer in the air, a trail of glittering dust that seems to lead deeper into the woods. Uh, you follow this trail of shimmering dust, punctuated by torn up flowers, smashed beetles, and one beaten unconscious fox, and discover a small clearing filled with presumably fairy nests. Why not? Why wouldn't I? Ooh, there's a void. 
little pocket of nothingness. Maybe you should ask Jessica about it. Reach inside. Fairy knife. Yes, yes, Molly Buttons. Huh, a lot of fairies guarding that nest. Nest must be something good inside. Dude, quit picking on my bird. That's not cool. Oi, mate, you messing with my bird? There we go. All right. Fairy star wand. Tipped with solid gold. Don't get excited. It's like a tenth of an ounce. Reduce the target's mystic That can come in handy. Fairy dust. Increase your spooky armor. Okay. But there's something I want here. Just curious. Clean over with sweat moss. Frustulant gulch. At least I think it was here. Like I said, I've only played through once before. Wow, that sucked. One damage to each. Hmm. Lick the battery. There we go. What? I like clearing, clearing them out before, without having to actually fight much. Flip. Do, 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 do. Throw the rock. Probably would have smashed the little thing. Reach inside. White hot ring. Okay. No, this is not where I get what I thought I got. I thought this was where I got the ring that makes that spell I'm using even more dangerous. Because it adds targets. Oh well. Oh, there's only three of you this time. Alright, yeah, this spell definitely comes in handy. Not that great against bosses, because it doesn't do that much damage. And if there's only one target, it only hits one target. But for clearing out crowds of yikes, it goes pretty darn good. It's good. Alright, clean out the nest. Oh, I got a hand injury. Darn it. Minus one muscle. And that's going to last until I rest. More belligerent fairies. Not more belligerent than usual, just more of them. No, that's less of them than I've fought before. Seriously. Oh well. <laughs> splat, 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 splat. Flip, indeed. All right. See what's inside. 180 meat. Not bad. This thing is horrible. Must be meant to be scare humans. Must be meant to scare humans away. Take it to your room. What? Seriously? What? This obviously evil, extremely ugly statue in your room. The room where you sleep. Yep. You drag the horrible sculpture back to the bus stop. A bus arrives, refuses to pick you up because of the horrible sculpture. You spend the next several hours dragging it back to your room. Pretend to fight it. And plus three to melee weapon attacks. And it's very nice that I'm using a melee weapon. I usually use a magical weapon. Because, you know, mage. But in this case, I like applying bleeding. Alright. Let's head back to the place. Back to the store to get a bell for my butt. Wow. Joe Scruggs. I don't know where I dug that out of my memory. It has to be elementary school. You hear some growling and shrieking and laughing nearby, and despite it being a bad idea, because it's probably more of those horrible fairies, check it out. It is, in fact, more of those horrible fairies. They're tormenting a badger who's back up into the shallow little burrow and frantically, frantically swatting at them as they poke with little knives. Just as you're about to back away, grateful they haven't seen you, you step on a dry twig. It cracks noisily, and the fairies turn around. Dang it, twig. Wow, this isn't going to be a threat. There's only three of them. Oh, their attacks lower stats. That's not cool. One good hit, and they can really mess you up. What I don't like about this spell is even when I up my mysticality, it does not up the damage it does. Very nice. Very nice. Mushroom cave. Literally nothing but an infinite swarm of mushrooms to fight. I can fight mushrooms till the cows come home if I want to. And I don't particularly want to. But I'll fight a few just to show it off. Bloody hell. Pull them off and fight them. Alright. Do, 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 do. Wow, they're highly resistant to sleaze damage, I guess. How about you bleed, buddy? And then you'll bleed some more. Bleed some more! What a mushroom cap. Plus one, Mr. Kelly. Whoopty crap, I'm already wearing a hat that does that and more. No, I already have one that does that and more. Pull them off and fight them. One more round of mushroom men. Clobber them. Hmm. 
Throw the rock. Lower his stats. Why do I even have this stupid duck call still equipped? That's what I want to know. Accessories. Oh, because I've got nothing but crappy accessories. That's why. Oh, well. Let's head out. This place is useless. Do 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 do. You push through the woods into a small clearing and discover a group of three vampires because apparently you aren't allowed to discover anything good in these clearings. Well, I say there's three vampires, but there's one vampire, one bat, and one small cloud. So it could just be a vampire, her pet bat, and the leftover of leftovers of a bean lunch. I assure you, we are all three vampires. Oh crap! She heard me. Talk to him. What's the deal here? Are you demonstrating the vampire evolutionary line or something? That, you know, the bat evolved out of the cloud and the humanoid vampire evolved out of the bat. No, it's. Is is the bat a caveman caveman vampire? No, if any things is more like the three states of vampire matter. What? Solid, liquid, and gas. Bats are liquid? Look, the metaphor is not a perfect one. Are we going to fight or what? Honestly, I'd rather keep talking about vampire physics. This is interesting. If you three are solid, liquid, and gas, that implies the existence of a fourth state of vampire, right? Look, I already said it's not a perfect... Well, yes, now as you mentioned, there is a fourth kind. Plasma vampire? Yes, when a vampire is destroyed by sunlight, they sometimes become a high-energy but short-lived vampiric spirit, which is called a mori. Which, now as you mentioned, is rather analogous to the plasma state of the matter. Neat. Well done, I never thought of this before. You are very intelligent for a human. Aw, oh, heck, I thought I was just selling for time, but for to be honest, maybe bats are liquid. Everyone turns to look at the bat who shrugs wordlessly. I should find some of the other vampires with this to discuss the implications of this. Good luck. Good evening, not good luck. Good evening, human. Good evening, human. Vampire disappears in the woods, leaving behind the remains of their picnic. Cosmetic wine. Okay. I never drink wine. Check the meat return. Oh, it's empty. Oh, well. I got a red cola. Ups my maximum P, like friggin' half the items I've found. Three figures approach, faces obscured by the shadows of trees. Wah, wah, ooh. Uh, excuse me, what are you? As they step in the light, you see they have human bodies, but their heads are hideous, misshapen fungal growths. They stare you with beady black eyes. Wah, ooh, wah. Holy crap on toast. Wah, wah, ooh. One of them scales angrily. Ooh, wah, ooh. Ooh, ooh, wah. Ooh, wah, wah. Okay, I'm not reading that every time. They're glaring daggers at you now. They exchange glances, muttered wah oohs, and move to the amazing air. As soon as they're fed up with your nonsense, they've decided to teach you a lesson you're more able to comprehend. Yeah, but I've already kicked bigger mushrooms' butts than you guys. Yeah, that spell is not that effective against them, but it does hit all of them, so. Yeah. Flip. It's preparing. So it's unleashed spores and do nine damage to the entire party. Yeah, you know what? No, it's not. It's about to die. Ooh, mushroom steak. Muscle and maximum HP. Not bad. Beppo's hole. Check out the spy terrible spider hole. It's just like the mushroom place, except it's a pit of spiders. And there's a guy to rescue here. The wriggling cocoon is roughly person-sized, so it's either a person who's been cocooned by a spider and is slowly suffocating to death, or a person-sized mass of baby spiders. Uh, hello in there? <laughs> Are you a person or a mind-breaking quality of baby quantity of baby spiders? <laughs> Is that the sort of noise a whole lot of baby spiders would make? <laughs> you cut apart the cocoon, bracing yourself for true horror. Fortunately, it turns out to just be a guy in there. Well, thanks, friend. You had me worried there for a sec. Uh, they called me Doc. I came here to get some free gauze. Got a bit more than I bargained for. Hi, uh, hi Doc. I'm humbled. I assume from your doctor hat thing, you're literally a doctor? Yeah, in the sense that doctoring is my profession? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in the sense that I have a legal license for practicing it? No. You were looking for gauze? <laughs> yeah, the web from big spiders make really great surgical gauze. Strong, self-adhesive, and even sterile if it's fresh. I unfortunately bit off a bit more than I could chew. You can chew it too? Uh, no, I meant metaphorically. One of the big spiders that live in Beppo's hole caught sight of me. I don't recommend messing around that hole, especially if you're flushed to the eels on medicinal alcohol. <laughs> can you teach me a... Uh, oh, sure, I can teach you some hobo code for all kinds of medical terms. He teaches you how to read his handwriting, then teaches you hobo code. Tell them about the hobo camp. You know, there's a hobo camp outside of Ocean City. They could probably use a doctor. Yeah, great! I could use some patients because I'm much too eager to get doctoring. Yeah, that's a joke that... Much too eager. That's the work that works better out loud than in print. Much too eager. I don't get it. But, see you there. Okay, I think he's saying but because it wasn't really... A, let's fight some spiders. 
Why did I do this? Why do I do this to myself? Well, at least they're not resistant to sleaze. Sleazy bolts. Slash. Gob of spiderweb. Increases my armor. And poisons and the other thing poisons enemies. Okay. That's probably enough spiders. And we're off. Alright. Plaque says Beppo's Hole, and then there's fine print. Beppo's Hole is named after Beppo H. Soracho. That's not my narrator voice. Who purchased this plot of land in 1903 with the stated intention of creating a shark sanctuary. He managed to dig one decent-sized pit, but before he could fill it up with sharks, it filled itself up with spiders. Or it would be, perhaps it would be more accurate to say the spiders filled up with themselves and their offspring. They are teeming hordes of awful, venomous offspring. It is the opinion of the, Cal of the Crystal Dream Lake Historical Society that Beppo's Hole should be avoided at all costs. In fact, we should probably shouldn't have put this placard here or included on our maps. May those you leave behind forgive us. Yeah, except I kicked their butts. Oh, no, it's hold the line. I stepped in some weird mushrooms. Uh, tisk, spores all over my good... Oh, yeah, spores all over my good dancing shoes, for crying out loud. Dancing is an actual dancing or a back alley shootout? Why do I want a different pair for each? They ain't that dissimilar. She wipes the spores off her heels with a leaf and hands it to you so you'll know what to do with it. What's this do? Ooh, mysticality and ranged magical weapon attacks. Okay, not ranged. Your meandering hike takes you near the lake, which may or may not have reflected the map dis which may or may not be reflected in the map display. You'll just have to suspend your disbelief. Molly picks up a flat stone and skims it across the water. Hey, nice one. Thanks. Hey, Big Buck. How big a rock do you think you can chuck? Raw muscle isn't exactly my forte, but I'll do all right. You pick up a fist-sized rock and pitch, pitch it into the lake. A loud plonk follows close behind you. You turn to see Molly picking up a softball-sized rock with a grin. That's impressive. Hey, I may look like a girl a girl, but this Tommy gun's got to kick like a mule. Got to keep the rust off these pistons, you know. Is Tommy your boyfriend? That sounds kind of... My girlfriend's name is Nancy. Tommy is short for the, M1, uh, the M1921 Thompson machine gun. Oh, right, I knew that. She heaves another rock into the lake. You try your best to match her, but it's not much of a contest. Walking down the dirt road, you catch a whiff of dog food. You know what? I could use some more pets. Bees. Kitty. Mouse hole. Good fronds are hard to find. There's no interaction with the mouse hole? That's horrible. Oh well. But what about undersea plants? Uh, never mind. With fronds like these, who needs anemones? Greta, you presume. Oh, like, hello there. Welcome to Greta's Compassionate Pet Store. I'm Greta. Hi, Greta. I'm Humboldt. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Where are all the pets? Oh, they're out back. In cages? No, in the woods. What stops them from leaving? Compassion. What do you have for sale? I've got a snake and I've got a giant mosquito. The snake is terrible. It, like, does two po no damage and puts on two poison. A giant mosquito? Ugh. Hey now, don't knock it. A mosquito is a great pet. He's great to have on your side in a fight. Now that they suck the blood of the stuff, they can pump the blood into you to heal you. Mathematically speaking, that's twice the power. Huh. 150 adoption fee and it's yours. I'll take it. Now you need to give it a name. Hmm. Blood Lincoln. And I might get the snake later, but right now I want to... No problem. Anything else catch your interest? What else do you have? I got a snake available for adoption. Yeah, thank you. What do you feed them? You don't need to worry about regular food. Go graze or scavenge or whatever. They're very resourceful. But if you want to soup them up a bit, make them really beefy, I sell specially formulated familiar chow. I'm a little unfair, uncomfortable with the words like soup and beef in a pet store, but okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Tell me about that special chow. I've got three bags of familiar chow left. One... Two. Three. All right. Radio is tuned to a wind chime station. Yep, I was totally right in giving her a hippie vibe. 
hippie vibe to her voice. Without a doubt. I'm going to go ahead and unlock more stuff. I'll be right back. All right. After way too much random searching, random wandering, I f guess I can't actually find places that... But yeah, I can't uncover new places in this map by investigation or by wandering that I haven't already found. All right. So I'm going to have to unlock places the old-fashioned way by exploring the places I already found. The village of Sandwich was home to a terrifying witch cult until all the inhabitants were convicted and executed in witch trials in 19, in 1692. 1962. That does not sound like a groovy trial. And the village stood empty and uninhabited for hundreds of years. Come explore the town and learn more. Okay. Jar, shells leave in the little jars of off-white stuff. Katie. Hecate. All right. Um, rubbing paper. It's a quest item. I'll buy several. Sandwich cream. Condiment for the topping of any sandwich, but the ingredient list suggests it's old congealed cream. I don't need anything else that adds sleaze armor. So, yeah. The Danforth residence has been converted to a gift shop for your convenience. Why not take home a jar of the sandwich cream that was the village's chief export, besides witchcraft? Okay. Zero to ten. Cannot pet cat. A horse trough. Actually, it's a water trough. I don't know why I said the other thing just now. Because it's for horses to drink water out of, dummy. Saddle shoes. It's been a while since I changed my shoes. I got a fish in a sack. A penny loaf eel, apparently. Cheese loaf. This trough may have been used to bathe human sacrifices both a ceremony. We don't have evidence of that, but it seems possible. Yeah, that covers most witch-related stuff. Security guard is keeping a close eye on things in here, which isn't difficult because there's only two. Hi there. Uh, welcome to the Putnam House. Please don't touch the exhibits. Uh, do you, I'm sorry, sir. I get paid to stand here and keep an eye on things. I, I don't actually know, know nothing about the exhibits. Plinth has an old book on it. Appears to be someone's diary. Ah, the little description on the plinth says Diary of Delia Putnam. That confirms that. Mostly it doesn't look interesting enough to be deciphering the archaic handwriting and spelling. He flipped to the last page. 6th of March. Ah, uh, I hate that Peter Proctor so much. He thinks he can just go around being as mean as he wants everyone because he has lots of money and lives in a big house and all. I should have used a stronger curse and it would have been worth the trouble. Antique Ragdoll. Ragdoll has a bunch of old pins and needles stuck into it and for some reason the word boring embroidered across its front. The little plaque on the front of the plinth says, Witches frequently use dolls called poppets to curse their enemies. This one was apparently made to target a Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Boring, though no one in that town is listed in the records. Tiny takes the bottom. Pins were not found with the poppet, added for demonstration purposes. Everything in the house was destroyed by the fire except for two objects, uh, uh, these two objects, which were found in a metal box. Okay, what was the point of any of this? Nothing? Okay. Just fl adding flavor. Fish. Fish. Meat. Ah, am I robbing a wishing well? Meat. I mean, I don't care, but it's still kind of no class. There we go. I caught everything here. Signed in rough black wax. Today is the trial of Patricia Willis Williams, who stands accused. The rest of the sign is too weathered and decayed. In, in 16, uh, 1962, again. In, <clears throat> in 1692, the inhabitants of San Luis were executed in the witch trials that were popular at the time, as evidenced by this old signpost announcing that. Well, I guess that's uh, the way the cookie crumbles for the witches. The old Adelopity Church altar. There are some brown splotches on the corner that could possibly be bloodstains. The altar of the town's witches... witches uh, perform their horrifying sacrifice. Note the blood stains. Okay. Sometimes you can find stuff looking around. I'm... Nope. Wow, this thing really is a useless tear trap. A furious gazebo. Uh, sign reads sandwich gazebo. Vagrants not welcome. That's not very friendly. Three buckets. Traces of strange plant matter in these tubs prove they were used for brewing all kinds of horrible potions. Yeah, or laundry. 
The chessboard has clearly been left on display. An allegory for the battle between good and evil. Black is winning, representing a warning for all good-hearted people, people to be vigilant against the encroaching forces of darkness. These dried fronds are of no historical significance. The Aras appear to this Aras, Aras, Ar Arias, appears to depict several important ancestors of the Proctor family line, though due to low resolution of the embroidery, it's impossible to determine who. So we pointed out this Aras is unlikely to have been manufactured in the, ca the capital of Pasticola, Department of Northern France, therefore it's merely a sparkling tapestry. <laughs> According to the county records, these were the most expensive stairs in the county. They go up a full one and a half floors. So they do. Okay, all these doors appear to be... This bedroom was traditionally given to the servants, as it was felt by the proctors. It would be less of a tragedy if they got in the, up in the middle of the night and fell down the stairs. The upstairs rooms are off-limits where we catalog their content, contents. Okay, I'll read the signs. I'm just wanting to see... This room is not part of the tour and also not part of the house. This was the Proctor's spare room where they kept spares of all the expensive things they owned. This was the bedroom of Peter Proctor, only child of Nicholas and, Agulus and Abigail Proctor. Agulus? Mr. Proctor's bedroom, home to the country's most, county's most extensive co collection of cravats. Mrs. Proctor's bedroom is especially off limits while we try to figure out how to deal with the strange mold we found behind the wallpaper. And we already read that one. Okay, is anything in this place worth my time? Because so far, that answer's a big nope. Sandwich boasted the country's first tripart outhouse. Do not attempt to use it, it is very old. More modern convenience installed for your more modern convenience. Huh, all three doors go to the same place. Splash water on your face. Oh, yeah! Get rid of those stupid negative things I picked up. Okay, looks like I can't do anything but head to the friggin' distillery. I know there's more stuff to find. Buy a soda, check the meat return. Darn. Sometimes you get a free soda. Five, five uh, meat soda and five meat back. Spooky looking lady is guarding the front of the old distillery. Presumably she's a vampire? She looks spooky enough to be a vampire. Is that racist? She glares at you, her eyes flashing blood red. Be gone from this place. You have no business here. I do, actually. I'd like you to invite me inside. What? No. Don't you have to? I thought it was one of the big things vampires have to do. If someone asks you to invite them inside, you have to do it. That is nearly the most opposite of truth that it's possible for it to be. Darn. Leave this place at once or the consequences will be most dire. Don't be like that. What's eating you? If you do not leave, the question is what, will, what's e what is eating you? And the answer will be me. Hey, that was pretty good. Yeah, you set me up for that one. For that one. Heck, one vampire. How hard could it be? As if she heard your thoughts, she snaps her fingers, and a couple of slathering, not-quite-human creatures emerge from the shadows behind her. What is this guy? A vampire thrall. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Ah, losing blood to a vampire. Gotta be a, to, to a mosquito. Gotta be especially humiliating to a vampire. Ah, you won. Unfortunately, there's almost certainly more of them inside. <laughs> 